guys, welcome back to my channel and another video here. Today I have a swatch and review for you of the Cleona Cosmetics Mixology Patio Season Collection. This is a six piece collection. All of the polishes theming is around drinks that you would drink on the patio in summer. They're all really brightly colored, really fun. We got a variety of finishes here and they definitely do emulate just a really colorful and fun mixed drink. And I am not somebody who wants to be seated on the patio. So I couldn't tell you if this exudes patio party vibes. I cannot stand when the waiter's like, do you want to eat outside? No, I don't want to eat outside. Well, who wants to eat outside? I guess people do because there is a patio, but like, I would like to be enclosed. This collection is packed with like shimmers and flakes of various colors and sizes. And I really like it because it looks cohesive, but every polish can also stand on its own. I feel like sometimes with some collections, when you look at them as a whole, they look really cohesive. This is me talking about OPI specifically for some reason. I look at them and I'm like, yeah, they have like, it's like a 12 piece collection, but it looks really cohesive. And then you start looking at the individual shades and you start to realize five of the shades look almost exactly identical. And then you're like, okay, what's the point? But all of these shades, while they look good together, they all hold their own. They're all different enough to be necessary is what I'm trying to say, OPI. I'm just kidding. I love you, OPI. Okay, you're fine. You keep doing you. So at the time of writing this information down, the full collection cost $68.04 US. The pricing does fluctuate, I think, based on the current currency conversion. And all of the polishes were either $11.33 or $12.09 individually, depending, because I think a couple of the finishes are just like a little bit more expensive. It seems like that might be subject to change just based on the currency rate, but I don't think it fluctuates too hard because, I mean, currency usually doesn't spike that hard, typically. Now, I, I, now that I've said that, I've cursed us all. And that leads me into my... I guess, Canada disclaimer, if you will. That makes it sound bad. Canada's fine. I just want to let you guys know, if you don't know, this is a Canadian brand and therefore it ships from Canada. And what that means for you, if you live in the US as I do and as most of my subscribers do, is this package will pass through customs and the shipping rate will be a little bit higher than maybe you're accustomed to. Uh, I'm talking like it's like around 10 bucks to ship. So I usually wait until I've got a handful of things that I want from them and then I make my order because $10 shipping is really not bad at all for international shipping considering what other countries pay to get stuff from the US. Uh, so $10 shipping, I'm not gonna complain about. I just wanna let you guys know it is a little bit higher. And as far as like going through customs goes, just just know that it can take some time. If you've never dealt with customs before, I do on the daily because it's part of my job. Um, but if you've never dealt with them before, like, let me just tell you, customs does what they want. They will send your package to the moon before they send it to you <laughs> just because they feel like it. So just be prepared to see your package maybe go to nine states before it arrives to you for some reason. Uh, sometimes? It arrives like three seconds later. Sometimes customs is like, eh, kick it over there. I don't know, but I do think that it's worth it because these polishes, everything that I've gotten from Cleona is very unique and interesting and fun. So let me show you the live swatches. I will also show you the full hand swatches. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Um, I have full hand swatches of all six. Some of these will be in two coats. Some of them will be in three and I will be sure to denote that as I'm going. So just make sure you're looking out for that if you were curious and let's hop right into that. And then I will give you all my thoughts, feelings, emotions at the end. First is Strawberry Mojito, which is described as a juicy strawberry pink crelly with icy aqua indigo pink shifting iridescent flakes and a garnish of mint green metallic micro flakes. You can really see those flakies shine through, especially under the right lighting. They are really, really reflective, which I really like. Here it is on two coats. You can see on my nail length, it does still leave some visible nail line. So for my swatch photo, I did three and I felt like it was pretty good coverage. 
Then we have Cosmopolitan, which is a ballerina pink with pink peach gold shifting shimmer, holographic micro glitter, and a garnish of lemon gold metallic micro flakes. You can see again, quite sheer on that first coat. It almost looks like I'm barely putting any color to the nail. On the second coat, you can see it build up a little bit more, especially with those gold flakies in there giving some more coverage. And then on three coats, you can still see some nail line, but it's not too bad. This is Apple Teeny. It is described as a tart metallic green nail lacquer with a shimmering finish. And this is the only one that I found was fully opaque for me and my nail length in two coats. That's not like a, a bad thing. I feel like Cleona Cosmetics does do sheer finish as well. I just wanted to make sure you guys knew this is the only one that I live swatch in two coats and full hand swatches two coats. And you can see very good coverage on this one. This is Spicy Margarita, which is an acidic chartreuse with a spicy orange yellow lime shifting shimmer. And this one, look at that shimmer come through. I love a shimmer, you know that, and you know I love chartreuse. It's such a grossly weird color. Here it is in two coats, and surprisingly, it got good coverage. And then on three, look at that. You don't need any more. That's great. I'm, I'm happy with that. And then we have Blue Hawaiian, which is a turquoise blue jelly nail lacquer with icy cobalt, iridescent flakes, holographic micro glitter, and cherry red and pineapple gold metallic micro flakes. Very sheer. This is probably the sheerest one in the collection for me. Those flakes under my ring light reflect back this beautiful purple, which I love. I couldn't capture that in my full hand swatch, which here is three coats. Very sheer, still very, very visible nail line. And then we have Gin and Tonic. This is an indigo jelly base packed with blue and violet micro flakes that shift to pink, peach, and chartreuse. And this one is again, quite sheer on that first coat, but on the second coat, you can see it start to build up. However, just as I did with all the rest, I did apply a third coat for my swatch pictures and I felt like that was opaque for me. You can see a little bit of nail line, but that's it. So what do you guys think of this collection? I have to tell you when I first saw the photo, the marketing, I was like, all right, you got me. I will be buying that. I just realized you can see the slats from my blinds on my face, but there's nothing I can do about it. But like this picture of all of the polishes and then the drinks set up behind it, I was like, all right, I'm a sucker for good marketing. I'm a sucker for Cleona Cosmetics. Let's just buy it. So I waited until actually did it. I think maybe it just released at PBE, but I bought it at PBE along with some other stuff. And I was very excited to try them, but I didn't even get to try them until like this week because I've just been so busy is not the right word, but I've been been caught up in a lot of stuff, I guess. I think it's interesting that this picture even sold me on it to begin with, because to be quite honest, like alcohol stuff that is like surrounding alcohol, alcohol motifs, anything related to alcohol, I, I don't find it very like interesting or cool or whatever. I'm not like puritanical about it. I drink like I've had, I've had a drink or two in my day, but I just am not like somebody who's like, yeah, drinking. I don't know. I have hangups about it. So <laughs> I just, uh, usually if something's based around alcohol or like drug paraphernalia. I'm just like, whatever, like who cares? But this one, I was just like, oh, that looks cute. I do love a fun, cute little mixed drink. It like, you know, the little umbrellas and all that. So I was sold. And then when I tried it, I was like, cause I had read the descriptions online and pretty much all of them either mentioned that they have shimmer or flakes in them. And so I was just like, oh, it's like a shimmer slash flaky collection. I didn't realize like how different all six of them were going to look from each other, despite having similar components in them. And that's what I really love about Cleona is like, it kind of reminds me of BKL where it's like, they just have a really unique spin on finishes and they take these colors and they really just punch them up and make them really desirable and just super beautiful. Like, almost on another level. And also I just like the way that the Cleona bottle is shaped, like the way it's cut, it's got like a little bit of a like gem kind of cut look to it. I just really like that. I feel like it's a nice touch and the cap is kind of rose gold, which like, I feel like I said this recently, but it's like, remember when everybody was just obsessed with rose gold? Like it was just like a whole thing, but I feel like here looks really nice. 
Regarding the naming convention, I always like to talk about like the names and like the theme of a collection. I know that it's not really that important when it comes to quality of polish and formula, but I just think it is interesting to talk about because I feel like it's still it's part of the creative outlet of this, you know, like the naming and, and the theming and things like that. So obviously we know this is called Mixology colon the patio collection. So that leads me to believe my conspiracy theorist brain that implies that there's going to be other mixology series in the future, right? Like, am I reading too much into this? I just feel like, could you imagine, you know, like a fall winter mixology series where you've got like spiked apple cider, like a hot toddy, whatever the hell that is. I don't know. I don't know what a hot toddy is, but I know it's a drink and I'm pretty sure it's got alcohol in it. Maybe some kind of alcoholic eggnog, I guess, which that eggnog is like a cream drink. I, that's the thing that freaks me out. It's like cream and alcohol together. I'm just like, ugh, ugh, like, ugh, I don't know. I, I just can't. It's, like, ugh, it's so gross. Um, but I'll drink it, I guess, if, if it's delicious. But it's just like the, the thought of mixing that together is just, it freaks me out. Anyways, that's not what this is about. So I just feel like it's implying that there's going to be future mixology collections. Because why would you put that colon in there? I don't know. That's just my opinion. And then, you know, the names are just, they're, they're just like drink names. So we got like Apple Teeny and Spicy Margarita, Strawberry Mojito and Cosmopolitan and Gin and Tonic and Blue Hawaiian. And like all of these are names of things that already exist. There are drinks and it fits perfectly. Like it, it works well. So I really like the theming, the marketing, like it's all very cohesive and comes together and it just makes it fun. Okay. When I was like, how do I choose my favorite? I had to think, I had to, I had to sit down and just consider a lot of things because I love just about everyone in this collection. Well, I love them all. I, li I like them all. Don't get me wrong. There was nothing I didn't like, but there was one that was just kind of like, this is not my favorite. It's not the best. Like the only one where I was just like, could take it or leave it was the only two coder in the bunch <laughs> that was apple teeny i was like yeah it's fine it's whatever but everything else is so stunning my hair keeps getting in my mouth it's like seriously at like horse girl proportions at this point i should just get a horse I'd, yeah uh but yeah i just the other five are are so out of this world that i just I can't decide, except I did decide. And I'm sure you guys probably thought I was gonna pick the green, but actually I picked gin and tonic, which is kind of ironic because I think gin and tonic, it smells like pine sole and I think it's disgusting. Uh, but it's just this really beautiful, it creates like kind of like a periwinkle kind of a color. They're like these little flakies in there. It's just stunning. Um, all of these are definitely three coders, except for the one that I was like eh, about. Uh, and then my close second, it's so hard, but my close second-ish would be either Strawberry Mojito, which is this beautiful pink with these shockingly blue, like a light blue uh, iridescent flakes running through it. I actually, seeing this in the bottle, I didn't like the base color. I was just like, eh, it's not really for me. But when I sat down to swatch it for you guys, I was like, oh wait, Never mind, that's a fave. So I really, it's so funny how seeing something in a bottle versus seeing it on your nail can really change your mind. And then of course, spicy margarita. It reminds me of what are you doing in my swamp a little bit from Sweet and Sour Lacquer, which was a limited run for polish pickup. This is a very similar color in my opinion. It's just um, maybe not as yellow leaning as what are you doing in my swamp? And so I feel like this is a nice alternative if you missed out on that, or maybe you didn't like how yellow that one was and you wanted something a little bit greener, go for this. Okay, I always like to highlight if I had any issues or anything like that with a collection. In this case, no issues per se. I thought that they all performed as expected and they were really nice and easy to work with. But this might be an issue for some people. Like I said, five of the six are definitely three coders, at least on my nail length, which is not very long. Which the other day, you know what? You know what Robert said to me? He goes, wow, your nails are really short. They look pretty bad right now. And I was like, oh. 
And he was being sarcastic. He was trying to rile me up. But I was like, he immediately was like, I was just kidding. I was just kidding. Because he saw my face immediately just be like, why would you say that? Because I think for most people, this would be pretty long. But I feel like I'm all over the place. I don't know why. Uh, anyways, yeah. So three coders except for this darker green, which is called Apple Teeny. And then uh, I will say for... Blue Hawaiian, which is a very beautiful color in the bottle. And I really love the flakies. Even at three coats, it was very translucent. So if I were a casual nail polish enjoyer and I wasn't like someone who likes to buy whole collections, I probably would have skipped this one. Uh, knowing what I know now. A little bit of nail line doesn't scare me personally, but I know that I'm less likely to reach for something like this, uh, especially when it takes three coats and you can still see it. I, I don't know, maybe if I put like a blue base down, this will look really pretty or even a white base to make the color pop. But if you have shorter nails, if you like to keep them like super short nubs, like you don't really like any kind of overhang, I don't think you would have any issue on two coats for pretty much any of these except maybe the blue but then again if your nails are so short you barely have a nail line that's not really a concern anyway so my overall thoughts on this collection i love it i definitely really enjoy it uh like i said the marketing the theming the polishes themselves they're all pretty great and if you haven't tried cleona yet this is one that i'm saying like to you guys fully from the bottom of my heart i feel like it's worth it to to make the leap now to make the jump and try these out. I mean, I've loved everything I've gotten from them so far, but you know, if ever there was a time to pay that $10 shipping, it's on this collection because they are just so fun. I would recommend picking some of these up and anything in their stained glass line is really pretty. They, they have a stained glass eyeshadow line, but they also have a stained glass nail polish line and those polishes emulate the eyeshadows and their eyeshadows are really beautiful but if you're not a big makeup wearer well here's a way that you can enjoy that kind of super shifty formula that they do but you don't have to wear makeup you just put it on your nails so i would definitely definitely take the leap if you haven't already i really enjoy this brand so yeah let me know down below if you guys plan on picking any of these up or if you have already and let me know what your favorite of the bunch is just like i said it's got to be for me gin and tonic. It's just such a pretty bluey purple. But I mean, you couldn't go wrong with any of these three. And oh my gosh, the sunlight is so bright. I'm so sorry. But yeah, that is all for my review today. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.